Almost anyone who's driven a Hino will agree it handles well and it's an enjoyable truck to drive. The new XL8 is carrying on that family tradition. Hi, I'm equipment editor Jim Park, coming to you from Mineral Wells, West Virginia, where in August 2019, Hino opened its newest manufacturing facility. The XL8 will be built here and a few hundred of them have already rolled off the assembly line. This test drive is an exclusive to today's trucking and heavy-duty trucking, and it's the first time the XL8 has been reviewed in North America. We're in Mineral Wells, West Virginia this morning, taking a Hino XL Series tandem straight truck out for a ride. It's Class 8. Uh, called the XL8 and uh, we've got about 10,000 pounds in the box here just to keep the back wheels on the ground. This one's set up with the new 9 liter engine, the A09. It could be anywhere from 300 to 360 horsepower up to 1,100 pound feet of torque and we're going up this hill just coming off that side street back there and it's doing a fine job. I'm making 35 miles an hour already coming up the top of this hill. So it's a six-speed transmission, obviously set up for uh, city deliveries and you know, regional operation, more in-city than on highway time. So 62 miles an hour here, I'm turning about 1,700 RPM. Uh, not bad, obviously, for fuel efficiency. More importantly, it's quiet for the driver. They're not going to have any difficulty carrying on a conversation in here. And uh, certainly by the end of the day, they're not going to be from all the uh, engine noise coming up from the floorboards. This is uh, it's pretty quiet. We're coming down this hill now on the engine brake on the A09. It's doing a pretty good job of keeping us at speed here. I haven't gained any speed coming down this hill. 45 miles an hour just coming up to a red light, so I'm going to get on the brakes and get ready to stop the thing. Uh, but that's effective. You know, for a relatively small displacement engine, 9 liters, uh, the engine brake's doing a nice job with the weight that's on this truck right now. Now that I've had a little bit of time driving it, uh, we talked about the dash layout, the driver controls earlier there in the walk around. Uh, this driving position, this, you know, armrest on the door, is in a really nice position. Your arm is naturally right close beside the steering wheel, which, by the way, has some, you know, your cruise control settings and what have you. You can scroll through various menus on the screen with this button here, not while you're driving, of course, but. Uh, all that stuff's really, really easy access to the driver. Controls that you will use while you're driving, of course, are like the mirror adjustments if you had to. They're right there. You don't have to stretch to reach those. Uh, turn signals in a nice place. Windshield wipers over here. Radio here is easy enough to reach. And the transmission right here at arm's length. So you've got all the controls that you're going to use while you're driving close at hand. Uh, a little bit further out there on the dash is the... Uh, uh, the control panel for the reefer box, uh, but again, you're not going to be using that all the time, so it's pushed aside, uh, not right in the way. I spent about 90 minutes driving the XL8 on this test drive, about 20 minutes on the highway to see how the steering felt and to rate its in-cab noise. The rest of the time was in the city of Parkersburg and on a windy two-lane shortcut back to the plant from the city. I was looking specifically for maneuverability and visibility, which are both important attributes in any truck that's going to be working in the city. So, narrow little laneway here. Uh, not a lot of spare room, but uh, from my point of view, it's not intimidating. It's not forcing me right or left. I can still get a really good sense of the position I'm in when I'm in the lane. That's an asset, obviously, when you're in a tight urban environment, when you can still figure out exactly where you are on the road. So now that we're coming into an urban environment here, uh, the visibility in this truck is becoming uh, that much more of a benefit. Um, so it's huge windows, side and front, and the uh, front part of the door is cut down quite a bit. Uh, so it gives you an extra couple of feet of visibility there at the side. You can see you know, proximity around me to the cars, what have you. Uh, it's pretty hard to lose one around the truck somewhere where you can't see it. In this truck, you've got such a low cut on those windows. And speaking of cuts, the steering on this thing gives you a full 50 degree wheel cut. So it's really, really maneuverable. In fact, making a 90 degree turn like this one, uh, I won't even pull the wheel all the way around when it stops. Um, that's, that's nice turning. 
I'll show you a little demonstration going around a downtown corner there in a few minutes. Uh, just how, how tight this thing turns. These mirrors are really nice. They're mounted on the door. Uh, you go for a little bit of a bump there. It's a bit of shape to them. Uh, but it's not bad, really. You can see well around the mirror, you know, both forward and to the side. And the same out the passenger side. Uh, you've got lots of visibility ahead of the mirror and it's easy to see in behind it. So you've got traffic coming down a side street at you at 90 degrees from the right. Sometimes it can get lost in behind some of those big mirrors. But this one's in a nice place. You're not going to have that issue. Another point that's worth mentioning here is the amount of room that's here for the driver. Specifically, belly room. There are some OEs that build a relatively small cab, and I have a friend who's a fairly big fellow, and he says he can't even get into those trucks because his belly's right up against the steering wheel. Um, another OE's answer was to put a flat steering wheel there. Uh, Eno's answer was just build a bigger cab. <laughs> There's, you know, six, eight inches of room here between my belly and the steering wheel. I'm not huge, but uh, it's there. I've been working all my life on that. Uh, but I mean, as you can see, there's obviously all kinds of room for a much bigger driver than I am here. Uh, that's got to be a recruiting advantage there as well. Hino customers have been waiting a long time for this truck, and I think they'll tell you it was worth the wait. I came away from this short spin thinking that drivers are going to like the high seating position for visibility and the 50 degree wheel cut for maneuverability. Owners are going to like the additional payload capacity and the long standard warranty. The XL8 is also available in a single or tandem axle tractor configuration, so it's a very versatile chassis. Top marks for this one, Hino. In Mineral Wells, West Virginia, the new home of Hino USA, I'm equipment editor Jim Park.